All right, Vomi. So this is the financial statement for Jamaica Brothers. I never did a lot. However, I did a few stuff. So I was going to point out some stuff that I found interesting. And then, uh, yeah. So as you can see, revenue wise, each year it has been gradual growing. It was 55, 55, but you know, almost 700,000 or more. Well, granted, if I add the extra trees here, them at the end, but for like relative reasons, it is easier for just like see these smaller figures. So, yeah, so this is actually 55 billion dollars. So, yeah, <laughs> 55 billion. So, they made an extra 747 million dollar um in the following year really and then as you can see it has been continuously growing and growing and growing year over year as it relates to the revenue side now because even though you have revenue then you have net income and it's been fluctuating but predominantly except for 2020 you can see the price has been fine as in like they made two bill Million dollars 2019 make 1.36 and from then he it's been gradually going up and up and up and up say so, all right so you know dupont analysis and already explained dupont analysis what it stands for however it really just tells the profit drivers of a company or what helps the company to generate revenue you can see granted the chart like the figures are destroyed it's really the chart and it's going to sit down and go through it, but it better just look from the numbers perspective. All right, so we can see that profit margin of 2019 was 4.3%. And gradually, 2020, 2020, it seems like 2020 was not a good year. And 2020 was COVID. I think that was the time when they had the world hit HD2. It right, was affecting their sheets at that point. So, yeah, so it's understandable. So 4.31 and then 2.44 and then it's gradually been picking up. What I want you guys to notice is that even though 4.7, like even though in 2022 they had 4.7 percent and then in 2020 they had 4.13, bear in mind that they literally skyrocketed in 2023. As you can see, they have 91 billion dollars here compared to. 71 so uh, you can get a smaller percentage and if you want to check the difference and if you want to check the difference really the difference is 18 is a 18 percent growth them actually uh had in that particular year 18 percent growth and like this is a a smaller margin so they still made more money at that point in time so yeah the return on asset is really how much revenue the asset has generated that they have and as you can see each year their return on asset has been good means say the asset that they have the value of it the sales that they have generated has been greater the thing is now i can see each year it has gotten relatively smaller but in 2023 grow because their assets also have been increasing drastically so in total assets right here say so it was 30 it was 35 billion and then it moved to 44 billion and then moved to 51 billion and then you now it's at basically 60 billion and then it gone to 77 billion dollars so the thing is they have been growing so their margins going to be relatively smaller but at the end of the day they have more and they're making more and so on and so forth the leverage now is really just debt <laughs> debt to equity and it's been consistent with what they are normally when it comes to manufacturing companies they're going to have high leverage they're going to have a lot of loans that they use to essentially operate and right? not that they're not making money but if they have Better using people money <laughs> and paying about little little that you hear. So, yeah. so there's not much I can say about the leverage granted it increased in 2022, but then it has been gradually decreasing. So they've been paying off the debts and so on and so forth. So yeah. And return on equity, 
is as far as being say oh, why is your return you like it as the owner of a company at that point so 16 percent in 2019 18 to 20, 12.68 in 2021, 16.922, and 14.54 in 2023. However, this does not like, this doesn't reflect in actual way I get the dividend because a good portion of their capital is retained. So when you look at shareholder equity, reserve, it is most of whatever they had most return retained retained earning is really just most of what they them just literally <laughs> hold most of the capital which is good because you know it's a big company and there's different shocks that can happen and you know you want to be all right what i'll also do is like oh, on this to show you the difference in what you're going to get so this is what like they made like if some if somebody owned the entire company so these are the metrics you know the 18 the 12 the 16 the so on and so forth however your dividend payments a dividend payments and we can go to dividend coverage ratio afterwards the dividend payment for 2023 the dividend payment for 2023 was 2.8 percent so nowhere so 2.8 so percent compared to the 14 compared to the 14.54 percent so as you can see a good portion of almost 12 percent of that is retained all right so yeah. <laughs> all right now so see see now on the topic of dividends let me just do this and this is pretty good for this company um especially at this size and you, know, you don't want to pay too much too much it's a sustainable business model i guess you can say so dividend cover ratio essentially means the dividend that you're paying out how much of their net capital how much of their net profit they're actually paying out in dividend and in 2019 it was 8.5 percent increased in 2020 drastically but uh yeah it it going increase because as I say, remember the whole ED situation was affecting them drastically yeah, to the point where they had to shut down. So not only losing, they had lost more. So if then the percentage that they pay out in dividend going to be drastically big um bigger. But in 2021 it came out down at 2022 and 2023. It's been relatively around the 15, 16% mark. So 16% average give or take. So yeah and the thing is you don't want a company paying out like it's training essentially to pay out dividends to its shareholders it's similar to like if you get paid i have a the only bill i have is only 15 percent of your paycheck you'll be fine compared to if you have all the expenses them mounting up to even 100 percent 100 percent and i was this hard with careers because careers paying dividends while taking it from retained earnings so yeah granted they get a nice dividend but that model is not really sustainable although the reserve is massive like ridiculously massive but yeah, i'm just saying so as you can see the dividend coverage ratio i did do a little chart so you can see like a visual representation of what it's been so you know 2019 2020 2021 and so on and so forth so it's just been one day where one year when them just did up after pay basically a good amount all right so now for the ratios so essentially current ratio is really just like say in the event that they have to use the current assets to clear up their current liabilities how much coverage they have and typically you want a coverage of like one to one at least especially at this size one to one or close to it and as you can see all years so far they have exceeded that matrix all right they're around on average about one to like probably 40 i want like 45 or 46 47 for one year so so yeah they have been covering in good the thing you know is fire sales fire sales are essentially the same as current only thing going to is minus inventory because inventory might take a little while for sale off but not really in jamaica brother's case but yeah it's just the concept 
So essentially quick ratio is just minus inventory and then the same calculation. Current assets over current liabilities. So, yeah. so as you can see, and the aim is to get close to one or at least one. And they have been in the 90%. Yeah, but inventory for Jamaica Brailers is a big, big deal. And they can they, they can get chicken so I would necessarily do to worry about this quick ratio. Alright. So no inventory turnover ratio mean like how long they've had the like how long it takes for their inventory to turn over into cash. And as you can see, as we say about quick ratio you don't need to worry about them because these are the metrics I'm so explain. So as well as the inventory turnover, whenever you see this reaches five, it means that it takes a month. So when this reaches five as in five, not zero point one nine, not zero point five in five. So the number five. And as you can see, this is zero point one nine, which means that it'll turn over faster and faster and faster than actual like you know somewhere that buy some today and then next month itself but if you get like a better understanding i did the calculations for it and if the one as i say one month equal a reason of five that means that like their inventory turnover means as they make the chicken them sell it within less than a day well this is a day and a little bit um in 20 because this is 2019 so 2020 it took less than a day <laughs> less than a day half day so they them them make the chicken in 12 o'clock by 12 o'clock noon it gone and one day one day in 2020 it took a bit longer which is 2.5 days essentially so yeah i guess it's just like a visual representation or give like more context however nobody is which inventory tied up means say uh, like number of days in which inventory is tied up essentially for this it just means you know, like <laughs> for the reason why it tie up is like maybe after them kill chicken and them something there them half of it like frozen and them something there fair period first on average it take roughly like well in 2019 it was a it was a longer period but as time progressed okay, you know remember say oh like restaurants and them something there but they had in a high 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 demand record you know around COVID period this so what are ideas are really not making sense like well like, you can just omit all that year but yeah, but on average you take them like roughly like two to three months to basically get it off of them hand. and then you know with these companies normally whenever they're selling at that high volume is normally on credit they sell it to their um customers and then they get the money so average collection period is roughly a month you are it granted in 2023 it was 23 days but roughly a month you can say after they have delivered the goods and then like cut about the money because when i was working at a wholesale thing was spanish again i remember the, when they carried the truck of chicken and they never paid same time they had it for like a month they go and sell and sell and sell and then afterwards they get it say so, gross profit sales and net sales ratio supposed to be straightforward is really just what percentage of sales is gross profit and what percent of sales is net profit and as you can see yeah so roughly roughly 25 percent is normally gross so it's like after cost of goods sold 25 percent but then the other expenses carried down to down here so it's around five percent uh, which is five percent is the highest and is the most they've made so yeah so five percent of 91 billion is almost like five or so billion dollars in profit so yeah and in structured and leverage ratio really like these are really for like creditors so it doesn't really matter but mean how much debt we equity them have relatively stable and covered ratio now is really just their monthly payment expenses how much time their current like revenue can support it and yeah essentially support it which means say uh, like in 2019 they provide 3.71 time and basically in 2023 them can provide 3.79 time so yeah them all right you, you want something at least like 1.52 and they're exceeding that so that's good in our metrics now for almond z score almond z score normally i do this calculation when it comes to like big companies and they're in the manufacturing industry because almond z score really just tells you how stable a company 
is and if you explain it i did make a whole video on it so you can check that out however almond d score you put how you can get the calculations you can do it yourself and then there's different weights towards um each score so yeah go look up here so for different weights them up here so so me just pause if you're interested and you can see so okay that is the weight category during this in a college for one project anyways say so, all right so based on this i just did like a search to show you like a visual representation it really just means how like how well a company is doing if the model bank or whatever so so the score metrics here and this is the five part almond z score they have um a six power but jamaica they use that really um so almond z score say looking for companies really in 2.999 percentile which means safe and as you can see from 20 19 to um 2019 them did good 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 2020 them did good 20 uh 2020 2021 them did also fairly good because they're in the safe zone so you want anything greater than 2.99 but they're in the gray zone which is like moderate risk of bunker but as i say them did in a little turmoil so you have to just give them a little time to fix it so yeah, I think it was settled in 2022, so really just one year, and they've been going back. So, see, they're in a gray zone, and that's why I'm stuck pricing where really a move. Because actual analysts analyze them, see this, and in 2023, you know, it's almost there. So, it, it's getting back on its feet, if um, you want to say that. So, yeah, I just think that it's, it's a really cool, like, calculation um so yeah so i think that's it as it relates to that we just have relative valuation left and then we're supposed to do, let me see yep relative valuation so relative valuation but notice relative valuation is not the best metrics to go off whenever you're buying a stock however it can get like a visual representation of what is going on in the market right and in the manufacturing markets, in the main markets to be precise, these are all of the competitors basically are yeah, in the industry. So you have Anis Brothers, Berja, Caribbean Twin, Jamaica Brothers, a lot of food separate with Cinco. So Grace should be in it, but not really because Grace is really a conglomerate and not just manufacturing and build. So near that can screenshot this do no calculations um essentially when you check uh their fair value for like pe which is price earnings is 33 dollars which is where they are right now 33 dollars is their fair value because they're currently at 33 dollars and 43 cents so that's their fair value however based on the industry average their book value meaning the assets that they have operating with is significantly high all right at uh, 54 dollars so when you average that now so you're putting what they're able to generate with what their assets are valued at and you do the relative valuation compared to everybody else in the industry they are valued at around 43 dollars right here so 43 dollars however you know what relative valuation now if like you can show where the market is going but for right now part three set is relative valuation so which means that if you buy at this price you're going like at a relative valuation at about 33 percent 30 percent discount and no guys not financial advice we're gonna do no research that's not financial advice like a foolish movie there at all tell me so yeah but anyways that is it as it relates to Jamaican cabrera's group um yeah i think i like the separation of the videos guys give me a bit more time to not all like review certain stuff but do more stuff and can like better explain it and so on and so forth so yeah enough i worry about the time so yeah we have been recording for 27 minutes and by the time i'm done cut this up 
for about 20 minutes or so. So, yeah, of course, so you guys catch the next video. The next final, the next start I'm going to do is Fontana because we start to eat, uh, so we can take a little while to put this out. But, um, yeah. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. I don't really expect this to get like a lot of views. The experimental financial financial part, but occasionally, you know, um, the analysts and the persons that are really into it will watch it. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys. Catch you next video. Peace.